we discuss in this segment the simplest restoration filter one can derive, the so-called inverse filter. The inverse filter has been traditionally developed for an LSI system, and it can therefore be implemented in the discrete frequency domain. In this case, we just invert the degradation operator, at least for the frequencies it is invertible. We present actually the inverse filter as the solution to a least squares problem, which results in the generalized inverse filter, even when the degradation is not linear and specially invariant. We demonstrate the performance of the filter in restoring an image which is blurred due to motion. We will use the same example for the material presented during this and next week, so as to be able to make direct comparisons among the various restoration filters. The main drawback of the inverse filter is that it amplifies the noise present in the data. So even if the noise is not visible in the observed image, it is greatly amplified in the restored image. Due to this main drawback, an improved version of the filter will be presented next. The simplest possible restoration filter one can devise is the inverse filter. Here is the degradation equation we are using, y the observed image, h the known degradation, and f the original image we try to find, and the additive noise. With a model like this, the only constraint we are imposing on the degradation is that it is linear. So, given this degradation model, the simplest possible solution approach is to minimize this squared error between the observation and HF. A necessary condition for this functional to have a minimum is that its gradient is equal to zero. And by the way, this is the same gradient that I denoted like this earlier on. So, we do know that the norm can be expanded as follows. So this term is independent on the f, it can go away, and then, as I showed earlier, the gradient of this term is minus 2 h transpose y, while the gradient of the quadratic term is 2 times h transpose hf. So this should be equal to zero, and therefore we obtain the so-called normal equations. So the solution f is equal to the generalized inverse. This is this plus here. So generalized inverse. If h transpose h is invertible, then that's the regular inverse. So this solution again is for just any matrix with no particular structure. Now, if the degradation system is linear and specially invariant, we then know that H is a block circular matrix, and we furthermore know that I can take the solution equation to the discrete frequency domain. And if we do so, we end up with the solution. So according to this, the restored image at frequency, discrete frequencies UV, is equal to zero when the frequency response of the system at those frequencies is equal to zero. Otherwise, it's given by this expression here. This expression actually can be further simplified because I have H transpose, I'm sorry, H complex conjugate UV, YUV, and then the magnitude in the denominator is H complex conjugate times H. So these guys cancel out, and this is just the observation in the frequency domain over the frequency response of the system in the frequency domain. And clearly, I can obtain this expression by just looking at the convolution equation and taking it to the discrete frequency domain and dividing by this since convolution becomes multiplication. Clearly, the main disadvantage of the inverse filter is the fact that the noise is ignored, as I mentioned, and if we look at this expression here, right, y is equal to h u v f u v divided by h u v, so this will give me the true solution, plus the noise term divided by h u v. 
Now, the noise is assumed to be broadband, and therefore, for those frequencies that HUV is small, I have a constant value divided by something very small, so this gives me a large number, that's the noise amplification. I can try to control the noise amplification by introducing a threshold here, so I'm not looking for exact zeros of the frequency response here, but for values that are smaller than a threshold T. Otherwise, for values greater than T, I use the other expression. So let's see how this inverse filter performs through some examples. So here's an example we'll be using kind of throughout this presentation to compare different restoration approaches. This is the original image, cameraman. It's blurred by a system H here, which introduces motion blur over 8 pixels in the horizontal direction. And then noise is added so that the blurred signal-to-noise ratio is 20 dB. So this is clearly blurred. The noise is hardly visible, but uh, through the restoration, when it's amplified, it will be really visible and bothersome. So with this setting, Given this image here, this is our observation again, Y, we know H, this is the description of H, and we try to get an estimate of the original image. Let us look at the impulse and frequency response of the degradation system. It's introducing one-dimensional motion blur along the horizontal direction. So this is the point spread function, the impulse response, it's normalized, therefore, the height of each of these samples is 1 over 8. So in, in two dimensions, if I'm to write HN1 and 2, it's equal to HN1, which is this one, if I rename it, times a delta at N2. So if I take the Fourier transform of this uh, signal here, we do know that it's a sync function. And uh, so this is the discrete Fourier transform. Let's call this the U domain. So I show the magnitude of H, U, V, discrete frequencies for any V. So this is independent of, of V, so it will be the same for, for every V. So it's centered. So this is a 256 point DFT. This is therefore 128. The height is 1, since this is normalized. And then it was chosen carefully, this motion blur over 8 pixels, because the zeros are at integer multiples of 256 over 8, let's say times L. So this is equal to 32L. So the spacing between the zeros is 32. Therefore, this is at 128 plus 32. So this is at 160. The next one is at 192. And the last one is at 224, right? And similarly on the other side, this there's a 0 at 96, a 0 at 64, and a 0 at 32. So there are exact zeros at these discrete frequencies. So if I look at the two-dimensional frequency response, the magnitude squared, it looks like this. It's this sync function. So this is U, and this is V axis so the shape changes along u but it does not change along v it's independent of v all right so this is the the the, the frequency response of the system that is introducing the on-dimensional motion blur and this is what we want to invert that this is all about right the restoration i want to to invert in the frequency domain this shape and this will give me the inverse filter We see here two results that are obtained by this thresholded inverse filter for the case under consideration. Motion blur over 8 pixels plus 20 dB blur signal-to-noise ratio. So two different thresholds are utilized here, 10 to the minus 16 and 0 0.01. The main observation is that both restorations, they look very similar actually, and they're both buried in noise. So this is not an acceptable result. We show here also one slice of the frequency response of the restoration filter, which is equal to 1 over the frequency response of the degradation system. 
we see that the at the locations frequency locations of the exact zeros the generalized inverse is also equal to zero without do using this generalized inverse idea one over zero should blow up this should be infinity values at zero the frequency is one right it's normalized one over one is one and then at higher frequencies because the frequency response becomes of the degradation system is smaller when I invert it, I see larger values of the restoration filter at high, higher frequencies. Let's see now how we can control the result by modifying the threshold using a, a higher threshold. We show here two additional restorations by this thresholded inverse filter for the uh, case under consideration. So the thresholds are increased to this value and this value and we see now that there is some decent control of the noise amplification as a, mat as a matter of fact this might be a acceptable restoration result we also show the frequency response of the corresponding restoration filters since there are small smaller values in the frequency response of the degradation system at higher frequencies these are the ones that are thresholded so when i look at the inverse filter down here the main characteristic is that the high frequencies are tapered off. The values are uh, increased, decreased at high frequencies in both these restorations. I've kept the vertical axis intentionally at the same kind of length here so that it's clear, um, it's easy to compare the various restoration filters. So while at low frequencies the inverse filter is, is faithful, at higher frequencies, the inverse filter is, is altered due to this thresholding, but this is a desirable effect since the noise amplification is controlled that way. We increase the values of the threshold even further to these values, and we see that as T increases, the noise is further controlled, so we see less noise at the output in the restored image. The frequency response of the filters is altered considerably. Actually, for this threshold here, we see that uh, it's only at low frequencies and these mid frequencies that the restoration filter has some values and everything else is zero. Um, we see some of these so-called um, ringing artifacts here that we'll talk a little bit about later. So these are artifacts and desirable effects in the image. Uh, so maybe this is also a, an acceptable restoration. So we do see here that the inverse fi filter by itself is not doing an acceptable job because primarily it amplifies noise. Through the introduction of this threshold, we're able to control the noise amplification in an ad hoc fashion. We don't know what the proper value of T is. However, one might uh, experiment around as we did here and choose a restoration that is suitable for their purposes.